I've been waiting to finish this video and upload this video for entirely too long. If you haven't watched the first video, go check it out. It's a blind listening test. Now the concept's not a new video, but I think I took a little bit of a new spin on the video. Most times you know what you're comparing. This time you have no idea what you're comparing. I'm really, really surprised by the results and I'm gonna be giving my thoughts on them and maybe try to come to some sort of conclusion. So stick around for that. But we've come to that point in the video where I'm gonna ask you to please hit the like button, leave a comment below, and subscribe to the channel for all things UAD, Luna, and all things audio production. And to support the channel further, go to thestevekinney.com. You can find UAD2 presets, UAD native presets, and you can book time to spend with me directly, going one-on-one, -on -one, answering questions that you might have about your audio productions. All of that is an amazing way to support the channel so I can keep making videos like this one and the last one and the one before that. You get the idea. I appreciate all the support. Let's dive into the video. When I did this test, I kind of was thinking to myself, everybody has emulations. You know, you have uh, the UAD plugins, you have Arturia, you have Softube, and those are just digital emulations of the real piece of gear. And most of us can't afford the real piece of gear. So your choices are basically a software plugin emulation or a hardware emulation. And I thought it'd be really cool to just kind of compare the two and see if we land mutually and we all kind of agree on one thing being better than the other. I really was curious, it got me thinking like, is there going to be any sort of correlation between people liking hardware or choosing the hardware signals over plugins? Now, me personally, I'll tell you my bias right up front, I think hardware is better. Ultimately, I think hardware is more inspiring to work with. I think you get to the end result faster. And I think at the very end of the day, there's just always some sort of intangible that you can't really pinpoint what it is, but you like it better. Uh, and that's just kind of where you land on. But that's just kind of where I stand. Now, I love my plugins. I love my UAD plugins. I love what SSL is doing with their plugins. Plugins are basically a necessary evil, and I think they sound fantastic. I use them on every mix. I use them in every project. I use them in every demo, and that's never gonna change. It's, matter of fact, it's only gonna continue. All right, so in this part of the video, I decided to include the original clips so you don't have to go back and re-listen and just do it all in the same video. If you just wanna skip to the part where I tell you what it is, just click the next chapter. And if you haven't listened to it yet, here's the test again.
I've played it eager. Yeah, I've played it cool. Sometimes I win and then sometimes I lose. And in that moment when I'm low, the future's fading, lost control. I hold on. Yeah, I give it all I've got. I've played it eager. Yeah, I've played it cool. Sometimes I win and then sometimes I lose. And in that moment when I'm low, the future's fading, lost control. I hold on. Yeah, I give it all I've got. All right, so the first test, uh, we were testing the drums and we were specifically trying to listen for the drum bus compression. Of course, it was the same exact drum part and one was going through a U80G bus, the other one was going through my Warm Audio G bus clone, both emulations, right? One's software, one's hardware, which sounded better. Overwhelmingly, everyone chose B. Those of you who answered B, you would have been correct. This was analog, it was real analog compression. And I think you can actually hear a real difference between the two. Kind of hard to pinpoint, but it, was, it had something to do with the way that it, it clamped down on the UAD version. It did a similar thing, it sounded like a G bus. There was something about it that it was just not as nice to my ears as the, uh, the hardware one. So something else that I found really interesting here, whenever I was working with the G bus and I was trying to match the settings and make them react similarly, this little headroom knob is really sneaky. What you want to do is actually give yourself more headroom. And I found by turning it counterclockwise in the plugin GUI, it actually ended up reacting much more closer to the warm audio or the or hardware. And so it's almost like when they, they finish the model, they go, okay, now turn everything up to 11 and make it react quicker to, you know, make it do all those nuances faster. Just something interesting to note. Berno Ducer, I don't know if that's how you say that, says for drums preferred A, which would have been the software, uh, because it's more squeezed and clean, uh, because of the faster attack and release. Berno makes a great point. What if you were going for that sound, right? That would have been the perfect tool for the job. And because audio is perspective, you kind of can't argue that the audio was better. But when you go to these test results, you've got out of all 11 people that left a comment, right? You've got nine that said that the hardware was better. And then you got two that said that they liked the software better. But again, it, it might have been the sound that you were going for or the sound that you liked in your head. So what's better? It doesn't matter, or does it? I don't, I don't really know. Honestly, I'm almost more confused now that I'm thinking about this. Let's check out what happened in test two. Um, in this case, we're comparing the Purple FET 1176 style 500 series emulation against the 1176 UAD emulation. And one's a Revy, Purple FET is kind of its own take, its own thing. But again, we're sticking with this concept of, hey, We've got a hardware emulation, we've got a plug-in emulation. Take your pick. Now, in this case, interestingly, everybody chose B. And B, in this case, happens to be the 1176 UAD version. The one thing I noticed with the UAD one is that it basically just kind of brick wall limited it, you know, like it just really clamped down the whole time. And it honestly felt smooth, whereas the other, uh, the FET one kind of, did its own thing, right? Like they both kind of felt like the same thing, but one let the transient poke through a bit more, the other one was totally clamped down. Anyway, again, we kind of come back to the subjective thing where you might really want that FET purple sound in your song and you might really need to call for it. And then in another example, you might really want the clamp down thing. Now empirically, pretty much everyone said B if we are looking at a screen here. So far we have one check for the hardware, one check for the software plugins. In test three, we were listening for listening for a preamp, specifically the SSL VHD pre's that I have in my 500 series rack. And in this case, signal A was 
the UAD SSL preamp and signal B was the SSL VHD. Now, most people here answered that they liked B better. Listening between these two, you can really, really hear a distinct difference in that final kind of transient whole bar kind of thing that the guitar does right here. Yeah, that's just analog. That That's what that sounds like. A little <laughs> purposefully overdone, but it sounds great. Even like this, it could sound cool in a mix. So yeah, for me, it was no question. I would have chosen this one every time. I like it, it sounds better. Recap, so you got one for hardware, one for software. Now that this third test, we landed back on hardware. So, so far we got two for hardware, one for software. Now the fourth test, the big reveal is that signal A was the analog signal and signal B was the software. And we were comparing again the SSL VHD. Now, one thing that I thought was really cool in doing this test is just how good the model of the UAD plugin really was. You really drive into it, it's getting those harmonics, it's getting those that sound, that grit really good. In a mix, I would never, ever, ever be able to tell the difference. Doing this AB, I can. And obviously the test results show that you can hear a difference again. So far that's three for hardware, one for software. This fifth test, if you actually look, it's about as close as it gets. So signal A was a Porta Studio. It was signal A is the analog. And then signal B, it was the Ampex ATR-102. The thing that I found really interesting when I was doing this test is I spent not joking two hours trying to dial in the ATR-102 to sound like the Porta Studio. Not possible in the slightest. It's just can't do it can't get close. This was the closest and it's night and day. It's not even close. Yeah, there's just some sort of warmth and thickness to the Porta Studio. It's also got that lo-fi kind of thing going on, but it's like just nicer overall. I would pick the Porta Studio all day long for this particular sound. But again, we come back to this whole, it's perspective. It's like, what are you trying to do in the song? What's the, what's the tone and the need for the track? This one was split. So, I mean, technically B1 out. It gives us some baseline. It's about 50 50. All right, the final one. I tested the TLA 50 against the TLA 100 plugin. And to my ears, they were like identical. Like, I could not define anything that was different. Now, the settings were different. Like, I had to. I had to put more gain reduction on the TLA 100 plugin. I had to really overdo it. I had to go to like nine to get the same kind of compression that I could at like four you know, four o'clock on this one, but they just sounded so close to me. It's so strikingly close that I was like bummed out because I love, I love this. This is so inspiring to use, but then again, you got to remember, just use what's inspiring. They obviously both sound good and they, and obviously all plugins, all of these plugins sounded good on their own in general. So if you made me close my eyes and say, which one of these was analog, I wouldn't have been able to tell you. They sounded so similar to me. So where does that leave us for the actual test? We've got one for hardware, one for software, one for hardware, one for hardware. That's, and then technically it became three to two and then three to three. We're literally evenly split. <laughs> so once I started to get answers in and I started watching the comments come in and reading them as I went, I started to develop a theory that it, it almost seemed like at the very beginning of the test, everyone's ears were so fresh with high accuracy. Most people chose the hardware. Their ears like the hardware. Some parts of the test were a little wonky, like the tape sim, right? Like you didn't really know what we were truly testing. Whereas if I said, hey, listen to this compression, which one sounds like better compression to your ears, you'd probably end up picking the hardware more often than not. But again, I, I tried to leave the questions as ambiguous as possible. because I didn't want to influence anything. But being that the test really landed on like an even spread of hardware emulations to software emulations, it kind of further drives home the thought that I had going into the test in the first place, which is there really isn't anything that's better than the other. They're literally just tools. And you're either getting a cool sound with it or you're not. And you're either inspired by it or you're not. For me, I know that more often I'm inspired by hardware turning knobs. I just love it. I think it's so much fun. And I think there are great examples of where the hardware does sound better than software. But does that mean that I shouldn't use software and I should only ever get hardware? No, it's totally impractical to go that route. 
even top level producers are going out and mainly mixing in the box, which is not totally true. I mean, half the time you see the videos where like, yeah, I've migrated, migrated being only in the box while they have like a rack of 1176s behind them. Like, you know, they're not being totally honest there, but to a large degree, they are. There's so much practicality to working in the box that it's hard to ignore. And even just from this crude video that I've thrown together, comparing some of these emulations, you can really fall down a rabbit hole of like, oh no, yeah, see that one's slightly better because of this. A good mix is going to be a good mix. It doesn't matter if you made that good mix with a plugin that you got for free or a stock pl plugin in Logic or a $50,000 Fairchild. Oh, you could even use a guitar pedal on a vocal, make something that sounds cool, stay inspired, stay creative, and I appreciate you guys watching this video. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Subscribe for all things UAD and Luna. We'll see you guys on the next video. Cheers.